Ladies and gentlemen, I only wish I could be present with you in the splendid arts and crafts surroundings of the Church of All Saints in Cambridge for the celebration of the big Christmas carol service. However, I did just want to welcome you most warmly to this event, which has been created especially to bring us all together to celebrate the Christmas season, particularly when we cannot be with those we love in the same church, to sing those familiar carols and to hear the Christmas story in person. Despite all the challenges, we hope this service will be an opportunity shared across the world to bring friends and families together in celebration of joy. This service combines the work of two important charities, the Royal School of Church Music and the Church's Conservation Trust, of which I am proud to be the president. This collaboration expresses the importance of the parish church to communities and people of all faiths and none right across the country as places of history, beauty, music and worship. As you know, these charities work tirelessly to conserve the best of our nation's historic churches and the wonderful musical tradition with which they are associated. And I can only send my most heartfelt thanks to all who carry out this vital work and to the generous supporters who make it all possible. As we prepare for the holy time of Christmas, there could be no better way to mark this blessed season than with the great Advent hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
Beloved in Christ, be at this Christmas tide our care and delight to hear again the message of the angels, and in heart and mind to go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, and the babe lying in the manger. Therefore, let us read and mark in Holy Scripture the tale of the loving purposes of God from the first days of our disobedience unto the glorious redemption brought us by this holy child. But first, let us pray for the needs of the whole world, for peace on earth and goodwill among all his people. And because this of all things would rejoice his heart, let us remember in his name the poor and helpless, the cold, the hungry and the oppressed, the sick and them that mourn, the lonely and the unloved, the aged and the little children, all those who know not the Lord Jesus or who love him not, or who by sin have grieved his heart of love. Lastly, let us remember before God all those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore and in a greater light, that multitude which no man can number, whose hope was in the Word made flesh, and with whom in the Lord Jesus we are forever one. These prayers and praises let us humbly offer up to the throne of heaven in the words which Christ himself has taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the almighty God bless us with his grace. Christ give us the joys of everlasting life. And unto the fellowship of the citizens above, may the King of angels Bring us all. Amen. The first reading is taken from Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2, 6, and 7. The prophecy of the Messiah's birth. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests on his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall con grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onwards and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this.
Advent calendar. He will come like last leaf's fall, one night when the November wind has flayed the trees to the bone, and earth wakes choking on the mould, the soft shrouds folding. He will come like frost, one morning when the shrinking earth opens on mist, to find itself arrested in the net of alien, sword-set beauty. He will come like dark, one evening when the bursting red December sun draws up the sheet and penny masks its eye to yield the star-snowed fields of sky. He will come, will come, will come, will come, like crying in the night, like blood, like breaking, as the earth writhes to toss him free. He will come like child. Please join us in singing together the hymn, O Little Town of Bethlehem. The second reading is from Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 to 38, the Annunciation to Mary. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man 
whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob for ever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Here ends the reading. is taken from the second chapter of Luke, verses 1 to 7. The birth of Jesus. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. 
This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Please join us in singing the hymn, Once in Royal David's City. reading from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 16. The shepherds go to the manger. And in that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favours. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, 
Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. For something like 50 years now, 
I've written a Christmas carol or hymn for our family Christmas card. And this year, it's on the signs of Christmas. And I'm going to read it to you. I've chosen three signs. They're not what you might expect, the parcels on the top of the wardrobe, or the cards along the mantelpiece, or the Christmas tree. You've heard, I expect, or my newspaper said, that there was talk of cancelling Christmas. We can't do that. The real Christmas is way beyond COVID cancellation, because the real Christmas is about the birth of Jesus. And these are three signs of that. Come count the signs of Christmas, a stable and a star, with songs of midnight glory and strangers from afar. The signs so long expected of all the prophets tell, our God has come to save us, the child Emmanuel. The stable shows King Jesus rejected by his own, with cattle for his courtiers, a manger for his throne. A crown of thorn awaits him, yet countless angels sing a sign of joy and wonder to greet the newborn king. And all the starry heavens are still for us a sign, the wise who journey seeking will find their king divine, the king of all creation, of all the worlds there are, the Son of God, our Saviour, the bright and morning star. I don't know whether you noticed, but there are several different titles given to Jesus in that little carol. Emmanuel, which means God with us, and then our King, and then the Saviour, and the Son of God, and then from the book of Revelation, looking ahead to our future, Jesus the bright and morning star. Happy Christmas.
Wise men are led by the star to Jesus. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at his rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men, and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that had been seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Please join us in singing the hymn, Silent Night, Holy Night. reading from the Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, 
and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, which were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. During the past 30 or 40 years, there's been a significant growth in the number of Christmas carol services arranged for all kinds of organizations, lasting almost through the whole of Advent. This carol service has been brought together by a wonderful group of singers. We've been privileged to have John Rutter conducting one of his own carols and a distinguished array of lesson readers. We've been joined by a prolific writer of hymns and carols, Timothy Dudley Smith, sometime Bishop of Thetford. And the RSCM has enjoyed collaborating with the Church's Conservation Trust. Our excellent staff have knitted everything together into a seamless whole. We're grateful for the mechanics that allow everything to flow together. The mechanics are important, but of course, it's the message that matters. First, we heard from the prophet Isaiah that the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. We could reflect that the impact of COVID-19 has brought us into a kind of darkness, a separation, a depression possibly, where we're divided from those we love and from those whom we're used to meeting regularly. But this wonderful passage is not just about now, it's a message for all time. There are many kinds of darkness that people suffer, and into the deepest darkness Almighty God reaches down, reaches out, to bring us light and hope. This reaching out is not a once and for all event, but happens day by day by day. God is always reaching out to us, lifting us out of the mire of despond, offering us the hope that comes from this beautiful, eternal truth. God's Son is born into our human likeness, to connect our frail and sinful humanity with the divinity that is God himself. Put it another way, God in Christ reaches us up from earth to heaven. Second, St. Luke makes clear to us that God the Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who has been from the very beginning before time began, one with God the Father and God the Holy Spirit, was born as a human being into the depths of poverty. His parents were traveling, could find no inn with space for them, had nowhere to lay their heads. They were utterly dependent on God. Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, was born without any of the benefits of hospital or nursing home care. He was born in a stable, laid in a manger. We don't often think about a manger. It was the animals eating trough. It must have been slimy with their saliva and their breath. Not a comfortable bed, perhaps not even new hay. Jesus was laid there. 
It seems wonderful that Jesus, born in a stable, laid in a manger, ended his earthly life, having been beaten half to death and mocked and laughed at, was nailed to a cross and died there. All this Jesus did for us so that we might be close to God. Third, St. John teaches us that God had planned all this from the very beginning. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The plan to save humankind from sin and death and to offer us the chance of eternal life with God was always there. But the time had to be right. The moment had to come. This was the moment. Not everyone would accept Jesus. It is our choice. But the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. Thanks be to God. And now we've come to our offertory hymn. Please do consider making a donation to the important work of the Royal School of Church Music and the Church's Conservation Trust. The details of how you can donate are now pictured below. Now join us in singing, O come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant.
Christ born in a stable, give courage to all who are homeless. Jesus, Saviour, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Christ, for whom the angels sang, give the song of the kingdom to all who weep. Jesus, Saviour, hear Hear our our prayer. Christ, worshipped by the shepherds, give peace on earth to all who are oppressed. Jesus, Saviour, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Christ, before whom the wise men knelt, give humility and wisdom to all who govern. Jesus, Saviour, hear Hear our our prayer. Christ, whose radiance filled a lowly manger, give the glory of your resurrection to all who rest in you. Jesus, Saviour, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the Father, full of the Spirit, hear our prayer, receive our praises, fill our lives. Amen. Rejoicing in the presence of God here among us, let us pray in the words our Saviour gave us. Our Father, who who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy Thy kingdom come, thy thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as as we forgive those who trespass against us. And And lead us not into temptation, but but deliver us from evil. For For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and and ever. Amen. Now finally, let's join in singing together the hymn, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, Glory to the Newborn King.
May the Father, who loved the eternal Son from the foundation of the world, shed that love upon us, his children. May Christ, who by his incarnation gathered things earthly and things heavenly into one, fill you with his peace. May the Holy Spirit, by whose overshadowing Mary became the God-bearer, give you grace to carry the good news of Christ and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love and those for whom you pray this Christmas and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>